All right, trying to finish up this GA40 for Keith Williams from 5 Watt World. You can see I've got the Dual Gang 1 Meg audio taper pot here. I've got some 10 Meg resistors here from grid to ground on each grid coming out in case the pot were to fail uh, while the bias would be off. Uh, there still would be a bias reference, so the output tubes would not immolate themselves. That 7.5K has been changed to a 10K. We've got a 10K here trimmer. And it's set almost to the middle, and that will let me adjust the balance between the positive and the negative sides. Or I should really say the inverted, you know, the, the, this, the first and the inverted sides of the paraphase phase inverter. It's not really positive, negative, but anyway, I'll be adjusting this trim pot. Let me show you what the scope is seeing. You can see I've got a measurement on the second grid and on the first grid. Um, the first grid is the yellow one that you'll be seeing next. All right, they're pretty close already. The yellow has got a peak to peak of 274, and the blue, the second, has got a peak of about 266. It's fluctuating a little bit as the wall voltage changes, but I can get in here with the trim pot and I can turn it the other way and bring down the uh, inverted side, or I can bring up the inverted side. So that's a pretty nice range of fine tuning. Uh, in practice, as long as they are that close visually, you're pretty much good because you're never going to have it perfect. It's going to be this a little bit different at each frequency, and the ear will actually like a little bit of variation. But if you if you want to, you can get in here and say, all right, two seventy eight and two eighty two seventy four. So it's two seventy one and two seventy four. It's just fluctuating with the wall voltage fluctuating. I'm feeding it 120 volts, but you know, it's kind of fluctuate. So 276, 278, that's about as close as you can get it. And uh, they are both centered on the same reference. Now notice to the eye, uh, it looks like the blue is a little bit lower, but uh, according to the, the scope, they are measuring the same. It really doesn't matter. You could set it just by eye. Here, I'll do that real fast. Now it looks the same. Uh, you're not going to hear much of any difference there. You, know, you might hear a, a difference as I tr go down like that, and you might hear a difference as you go down like that, and maybe we'll play around with that later, or just a minute uh, when I hook up the speaker. But for right now, uh, that's pretty much perfect. So let me uh, uh, disconnect this from the uh, dummy load and hook it up to a speaker where the mics, so you can hear what this is sounding like and what, if any difference, the imbalance in the phase inverter can make. All right, so it's hooked up now. Uh, it's running into the speaker of a deluxe reverb cab, which has got a Weber 50-watt Blue Dog, which is a nice speaker for this, uh, you know, the, the Alnico 50-watt version of a Celestian Blue. And I've got the Master on 10, and I've got the treble, uh, the, the tone on 10, and we're gonna start on the regular non-vibrato channel. As I turn it up to about 9 o'clock and power the amp on, because I forgot to power the amp on for this, uh, you're going to hear a staticky sound come in. And that static is being uh, just the non-shielded cabinet picking up the Wi-Fi router. There it is. And as I put my hand over the chassis in the input jack area, all that goes away because my, my hand is actually acting as a shield. When this is in its cabinet, uh, with the metal up top, it'll be fully shielded and won't have those environmental noises intruding. Anyway, so here is the sound uh, with the phase inverter balanced. Uh, the inverter all the way down. Gets a little more polite. Phase inverter, inverted side all the way up, a little bit louder than the non-inverted side. It gets a little bit louder, a little bit more compressed. Uh, it's not a huge life-changing difference between balanced and having the, uh, the inverted side a little bit louder. So I'm putting it back here to a rough balance. And uh, here is the normal channel.
is. Zamp does not have a lot of clean headroom, particularly on that channel. Uh, it doesn't really do a clean. That's at nine o'clock. It can go louder. You'll hear that in the final playing test when I get a player over here to do that for you. It's not a very bright channel. You can hear that the tone circuit definitely rolls off highs, but it, there's no sparkle thing. This is not a sparkly, jangly amp. This is not what this thing's for. <laughs> The cleanest sound you can get out of this is just when it's just barely making any sound at all. And it's a very nice sound, so for late night practice between the, that and the master volume, Very useful, but what this thing's really supposed to do is have some raunch to it. It's a kind of a kind of thing. It's, sorry about the, the buzz from the pickups being so close to the Transformers. Uh, bench tests, uh, I'm just not going to walk 20 feet away so that doesn't happen. It's going to occasionally have some buzz from pickups pick, picking uh, being close to the Transformers. Uh, the master volume is very effective and useful, but uh, due to the way 6v6s in this amp are, are biased and uh, the signal that they're pumping through a relatively small output transformer, some of the character of the overdrive is coming from the output section. So as you turn the master volume down, that begins to happen less. Um, it's for about half the, the volume, it's still fairly transparent, then you begin to hear it. But you know, from... <laughs> You begin to hear it clean up there. A note on that, I've got an audio taper volume pot in for the master right now. I'm going to change that to a linear so that the uh, drop is not as sudden and everything that you're hearing now at noon will be uh, how it behaves at like 8, 30, 9 o'clock and everything that's happening now at, at two o'clock will be closer to 11 o'clock because really two o'clock to full up is is the range that you want to use most of the time to get the the character still there if i go to the other channel a little bit cleaner because it has an insertion loss for the tremolo. So that's working really nicely. It's got a very nice sound, uh, very uh, much. A, this is the entire amp is a character amp. It's not a jack of all trades, do everything amp. It's a, hey, let's let's go back in time kind of thing. I mean, that's a unique uh, tremolo that would sound great on a Yardbirds record, but it's not going to do for a, a, a clean ballad for the most for the most part. The uh, the other channel is is not got much clean headroom to it. And it's the whole thing has got a lot of throaty mids. And while the tone circuit works, there's no bright and sparkle chimey thing here. This is a raunchy amp. It's interesting to me that this was marketed as the GA40 Les Paul. Uh, so if you were to travel back to 1959 and buy a Les Paul or a Les Paul Jr., they'd want you to buy one of these. And the premise there was that if you had that rig, you would sound like Les Paul. 
And if you've ever actually listened to what Les Paul sounded like on his recordings, you could he could never have used this. He, there's no Les Paul approved sound out of this thing. Let's see if I go to the middle position on this telly and turn the, the volume down to seven. So it's a real clean output and just barely turn this channel on. That's as clean as it gets. And as, that is just not, not anything Les Paul ever sounded like. I mean, it's breaking up now. If I turn the volume all the way up on the guitar. There's not a single clean sound to be had out of this amp, so I don't know how they ever marketed this as a Les Paul, because all his sounds were sparkly clean. But anyway, uh, despite all that, that's a long time ago, and people know what this amp is good for, and it's good for stones and yard birds and raunchy, raunchy blues and all the things we associate with Keith. So uh, uh, I look forward to uh, hearing his thoughts when he gets a chance to play this. I'm gonna change out that volume pot uh, from the audio to a, a linear, and then I'm going to get one of my local pros to come over here and do a proper playing demo of, of it for you guys, because this is just a bench test. And then we'll be seeing this amp on 5-Watt World. So that'd be cool. Until then, thanks for watching.